This is to Jesus through Mary's spirituality par excellence in the Word of God. It says, on the third day there was a marriage at Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus also was invited to the marriage with his disciples. Very interesting that St. John the Evangelist would mention Our Lady before he would mention Our Lord. But this is very scriptural. This is true devotion to Mary. Not Mary above Jesus, but to Jesus through Mary. Just like in the visitation, St. Luke records and St. Louis Marie Grignon de Montfort in True Devotion to Mary expounds upon this so beautiful that when the Holy Spirit came into a uh, you got a picture of this scene also, that the Lord our God, Jesus Christ, is in the womb of the Immaculate. She comes into the presence of Elizabeth, who St. John the Baptist, the precursor of Christ, is in Elizabeth's womb, and St. John the Baptist leaps for joy. And it was that filling of the Holy Spirit into John the Baptist that overflowed into the body of Elizabeth. And the scriptures say she was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed in a loud voice, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. This is to Jesus through Mary's spirituality par excellence in the Word of God. Not in private revelation, in the Word of God, in sacred scripture recorded by the evangelist. St. Luke is telling us, in other words, that we always go to Jesus. He's our ultimate end. He's our goal in all things. He's the beloved of our souls. But the fastest, the safest, the shortest, the most secure way that Pope John Paul the Great embraced, that Blessed Teresa of Calcutta embraced, that St. Louis, Gr Louis Marie Grignon de Montfort embraced and taught, and St. Maximilian Maria Kolbe embraced and taught. All the great saints, there's no other way. It's to Jesus but through Mary. So St. John says, again, the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus also was invited to the marriage with his disciples. He is not putting Our Lady above our Lord, but again, it's Mary and then Jesus. We go through Mary, the gate of heaven, to Jesus our Lord. When the wine failed, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. The fathers and doctors of the church comment on this and they refer to this, the no wine, as the Holy Spirit. That we, when we run low, when we're running out of the Holy Spirit, who did they turn to? Who? They didn't even turn to her. She, what's that word? She, and I can't even think of the word now. I, I love when you do this to me for humiliation. Um, she foresaw, I don't, what's the word? When a mother foresees the need of the child. Our lady, they didn't even have to come to her. Our Lady was watching. Our Lady, the good mother she is, was watching, and her sorrowful and immaculate heart was moved with compassion. It was moved to pity. you got to understand these wedding feasts lasted sometimes 10, 13 days, and to run out of wine was a great embarrassment. What are they going to drink? They're going to look upon a couple and say, what, they didn't prepare for the wedding feast? What, are they too cheap to supply wine all the days of the wedding feast? Our Lady felt for this couple. She was already looking. And she turns to our Lord without anybody coming to her and saying, Mary, can you help us out? And she says, they have no wine. And Jesus said to her, O oh woman, what have you to do with me? And those who are anti-Mary, anti-Catholic, think that this is an anti-Mary verse in sacred scripture. I've never said to my mother, if she asked me to do something, O oh woman, because she probably would have hit me in the head with a shoe or the pasta spoon, the macaroni spoon. But Jesus is elevating her. Oh, woman, remember in the book of Genesis, I will put enmity between you and the woman in the book of Revelation. And, and a great sign appeared in the sky. A woman clothed with the sun. Well, here is the woman. And here is our Lord speaking as God to the woman. Here is the new Adam speaking to the new Eve. And he's telling her, woman, oh, woman, what have you to do with me? My hour has not yet come. Mother, you know. You know I'm not ready to make myself publicly manifest because the minute I do this, I begin my journey to Jerusalem to suffer, to die, to be crucified for the sins of men. And Our Lady just says, His mother said to the servants, Do 
whatever he tells you. If my mother were to ask me if I was king of the world, God forbid that'd be a scary thing for me and you, but if I was king of the world and my mother said to me, Rocco, they have no wine. And I might look at her like, oh, come on, I can't do this right here. But if she just turned and said, do whatever he tells you, it's because Our Lady knows that anything that she asks of her son, of our Lord, of our God, he will grant to her. Why is that? Because she would never, ever, ever ask anything against his holy will. Her will from the moment of her immaculate conception was one throughout all eternity with the will of our Heavenly Father. She knows the will of God. She lived the will of God. She embraced the will of God with her fiat from the moment of her immaculate conception and right now in her glorious throne in heaven, it's all about the will of God. Our Lady, par excellence, embracing the will of God as mere creature, our Lord, of course, is, is divine and human. So she says, do whatever he tells you. Our Lady says to you and I, do whatever he tells you. It's not a suggestion. She's giving a command. I've heard this referred to, and I like it, as Mary's command. And what does Our Lady want? Nothing for herself. Do whatever he tells you, knowing without a doubt that he will do what is best for the souls, all souls there, knowing that he will give glory to his mother, that good Hebrew son that he is. He who fulfilled the command perfect, honor thy father and mother.